Praise the Lord. Somebody say, I am victorious. Whatever the past, whatever the past, that is gone. Today, this month, this year, henceforth, I say it well. I, I of this generation, at this moment, wherever I go, wherever I am, whoever I meet, I am victorious. Confirmed in your life. Amen. Affirmed in your life. Amen. Nothing on earth, nothing in hell, nothing in the jungle, nothing in the river will change that. You are victorious in Jesus' name. Raise up your hand. And then in your heart, understand. You are different from today. You are no more what you used to be. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, Amen. I pray the spirit of the conqueror, the spirit of the victor, and the spirit of the achiever will come upon everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. The past is forgiven. The past is forgotten. A new day today. A new energy today. A new focus today. I pray the power to be victorious in this generation. Give to everyone in Jesus' name. Victorious. Unstoppable. Let it happen to every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Confirm it, O Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. That's what we expect. That's what we're going to see in your very life. Amen. All the questions you are having, all the questions you are asking, all those questions were based on the past. So, all those questions now, heaven has answered for you. I couldn't, now I can. I was not able, now I am able. I was defeated, but now I am victorious. Somebody shout, I am victorious. On the first day, we dealt with the eye of the impact. On the second day, we dealt with the aim of the impact. Now today, on the third day, we're dealing with the P of the impact. Somebody shout P. P. Pursuing a purpose-driven life to its peak. Its peak, the very highest the Lord is going to take you today. And it's going to move you to the very highest point of what he created you for in Jesus' name. Pursuing a purpose-driven life to its peak. I'm reading to you from Acts chapter 26. And I'm reading from verse 16. It says, but rise. And stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee. You are going to notice in that verse of scripture. I write to you now the word V, T H double E. That's the old way of saying you. And so, 
The Lord was talking to a man at this time and he said, V, he said, Rise. He said, Stand up upon thy feet. He said, Because I, the maker of heaven and earth, I, the one that can turn your life around, I, the one that can remake you, can remodel you, and the one that can reform your life, he said, I, that I, the I am that I am, the great God of heaven, the maker of heaven and earth, and the one that takes the life of every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, and turns it in the right direction, that I is talking to you today. And he said, I have appeared unto thee. Unto thee. There were many people traveling with Saul of Tarsus that day. But in particular, this God of heaven, this creator, this one that can reform life, this one that can make him all over again, he pointed at him, he said that at him, he focused on him and said, I have appeared unto thee. And so as you are here today, you forget everything of the past, you forget everyone around, and you say, he has appeared unto me, unto thee. Then he says, for this purpose, you see, life, if life is going to have a meaning, it must have purpose. If you are going to drive your car, your vehicle, if you are going to drive it to a destination, you must have a purpose in mind. And you must say, I am driving to such a place that's life. If your life is going to get to the peak, you must drive with a purpose. If your life is going to achieve the highest, you must drive for a purpose. If your talents are going to be made use of in the right way and in the right manner to get to the place the Lord has ordained for you. You must drive with a purpose. If you're going to amount to anything in life, you must drive for a purpose. A life that doesn't have a purpose, a life that is not driving to a goal, a life that doesn't have a peak to attain that life without purpose will amount to nothing. As I look at people all over the world, young and old, I see people who just live. They wake up in the morning. They go through the rigmarole, the routine of life. And they do whatever they want to do. Actually, what they did yesterday, they do today. And what they are doing today, they are going to do tomorrow. There's no plan. There's no purpose. There's no progress. And there is no perception of this is where I am going. Number one, there are people who are passive and dead in. They have passive dead in life. It's like the brain is dead. The mind is dead. The, the, vital, the vital part of the body, they are dead. It's like the feet are dead, the hands are dead, and they are just there, they perceive. And there's no goal, and there's no desire. There's no mountain top. They're looking at number one, the perceived dead in life. Number two, there are people, they get to a place, they are stuck. They don't know to go back, they cannot. To move forward, they cannot. And to move sideways, they cannot. They're just there. And I say, number two, the pinned down life. Just page, pinched down. And there's no way they can make any move. And there's no way they can make any forward movement because they live in pinch down life. Number three, there are people, they make mountains of mole hills. 
What that means is there's a little bulging out of the ground, like a little hill. They make an Himalayas mountain out of that. I have a problem. I have a challenge. All the problems of the world are over me and they drown in their problem. Number three, the problem drowns life. They are overwhelmed. Their tears block their eyesight. Their mind is totally overwhelmed and they have this understanding in life. Yes, I hear what you are saying, preacher. I hear what you are saying, minister. I hear everything that you say, but you know, I am peculiar. I am under the sea of problems, and they live in a problem drowned environment. The Lord will bring you out. He brought Jonah out of the whale, he brought Jonah out of the depths of the sea. Today, he'll bring you out. Now, number one, perceive dead in life. That will not be my life. That will not be your life. Number two, pinch down life. All the pins, all the pegs, whatever it is, that is driven into your feet, and you are static there, that thing miraculously, the Lord will remove today. Number three, problem drowns life. The problem becomes like an ocean, like a sea, and you are, you are drowned inside. Now, a turn. Now, a change. Now, a miracle. Amen. Amen. The purpose-driven life. All of a sudden, light shines from heaven. All of a sudden, a voice comes from heaven. All of a sudden, the power that breaks every yoke, the power that can shatter anything, everything disturbing your life, all of a sudden, that power that shatters every chain and breaks every yoke comes upon your life tonight and a purpose drops from heaven into your heart tonight in Jesus' name. And then all of a sudden, there's a goal. There's a purpose. There is a path to get to that purpose. All of a sudden, everything in you wakes up and you say there is a life to live and it's like you are born today it's like you are born again it's like you are born from heaven it's like you are born afresh it's like where is life why have i been sleeping all my life now there is a purpose and i am going to live you will live in jesus name the purpose driven life after that passion comes Passion. That's the fire of heaven in your soul. It burns in your heart. It burns in your spirit. It burns in your bone. And you have a passion dominated life. You wake up in the morning and then you say, There is something to do today that will move me forward. There is something today that I will do. And then I will climb up on the ladder of achievement. And then you are you are passionate and you are dominated by that passion problems are still there they don't have any they don't have any power on you and the difficulties are still there in the world they don't have any power on you because now you are living a passion dominated life and then your life becomes positively directed a positively directed life all the negative arms and all the negative roots of you know problematic life all that is gone and everything the heavenly father has not planted in your life all that will be uprooted tonight in my life in my life every plant that the heavenly father has not planted Every plant my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted tonight in Jesus' name. And then number seven, in the peak 
destined life the peak destined life that every moment and every morning you wake up you're looking at the top and you're you're looking at the peak and you know that your life is now destined for the peak my life is destined for the peak my life is destined to the top of my achievement my life is destined to the place the lord has ordained for me passive life passive dead in life pinch down life problem drowned life purpose driven life passion dominated life positively directed life and then the peak destined life that's the journey we're making today yeah. and the lord will take you there yeah. and everything you need to know i've heard about other people they made it they were innovative they took initiative they had interest and then they go to the place i'm just wondering how did they get there it will come to you now yeah. You will get there in Jesus' name. Pursuing a purpose-driven life to its peak. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the regrets of pursuing money and materialism. The people who think all of life is made up of money, or materialism the regrets they have how they labor for the wind how they labor without a purpose from heaven dropped in their heart number two the responsibility of pursuing the mandate of our maker our maker your maker your creator your redeemer the almighty god he made you like no other person he made you unique. He made you special. And he has something your day that you will be, that you will do, that you will achieve, that cannot be duplicated by another person on earth. And then you discover that. And then you said, my maker, when he made me, when he created me, he created me so that I will fulfill a particular mandate. And then you have the responsibility of pursuing that mandate of your maker. Number three, our reassurance while pursuing his mission towards men. Our lives are to impact men, impact our community, impact our country, impact everyone around. And he gives us reassurance that while we are pursuing his mission towards men, that he will do some things for us, in us, through us, by us, that will make us get to the peak and get to the place we must get to. You will get there. With the power of heaven, you will get there. With the unfailing power of God, you will get there. Our responsibility as we move on and we get, we're involved in the mission towards men. That responsibility the Lord has given us, and we're going to achieve that in Jesus' name. One, two, and three, and I will get there. You will get there. Number one, the regrets of pursuing money and materialism. I want you to look at his story. It's the story of a man pursuing money, materialism, and at the end of the day, he found himself that he had been a foolish man. You will not be a foolish man. 
I will not be a foolish man. You will not be a foolish woman, foolish boy or foolish girl. The wisdom of heaven will come upon your life in Jesus' name. And if you follow the wisdom of God, the plan of God, the calling of God, there will be no regrets in your life. Had I known, after so many years we said, had I known, coming to the end of life, had I known, I would have followed this path, coming to the last day of his life on earth, had I known, I pray that will not happen to you. Yeah. Let's look at the story. It's in Luke chapter 12. Read him from verse 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life, this Christ talking, talking to the people, talking to us, talking to you, beware of covetousness. Money, money, money. Wake up in the morning, money. How are you going to get it? Gambling. Money. How are you going to get it through fraud? Money, how are you going to get it through cheating other people? Money, how are you going to get that cutting corners? Money, how will you get that abandoned education, abandoned personal development, and get to other people, get what they have? Beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And then he tells us in verse 16, in verse 16 there he tells us, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man, money, of a certain rich man, materialistic man, of a certain rich man, popular man, of a certain rich man, progressive man, physically, of a certain rich man, brought forth plentifully. And then in verse 17, it says, And he thought within himself, and he thought within himself. Now, he didn't think about God. He didn't think about heaven. He didn't think about what the future destiny will be. He didn't think about his community. He didn't think about improving the lots of men and women around him. He thought of himself. He thought by himself. He thought for himself. He thought within himself. Everything revolved around himself. You know people like that? I want to be happy. That's the only thing they think about. I want to have a lot of wealth. That's the only thing they think about. Me, me, me. And they never think, how can I improve the world in which I am? How can I improve the conditions of people around me? I want to be a doctor because I'm, I'm concerned for the people who are suffering. That's a good way to think. I want to be an engineer because I'm concerned about some of these rickety things that people are doing and building. And I want to raise up a structure that will stand all the vicissitudes of life. That's the way to think. I want to bring shelter to people. I want to bring happiness to people. Thinking about other people. That's why we have impact. Impact means you want to so live. You want to so labor, you want to so work, and you want to so get something that will impact your generation, that will impact the lives of other people, that will make life better for everyone around. But this one, he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? I, because I, that's another I, have no room where to bestow my fruits. Everything is selfish. Everything is just for himself. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, then he said, this will I do. The man does not, did not know that any person is living on earth. My fruit, my crops, my produce, the result of the labor of my hand, 
How can I make the life of another person better? How can I lift up another person? How can I educate somebody? How can I bless a family? How can I put joy, laughter, food, clothing, shelter on other people? No, no, no. He wasn't thinking about that this well. I do. I, another I then, I pull down my bands and build greater. And there will I, the man is full of I, I. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Look at verse 19. And I will say to my soul, my neighbors are hungry, that, that wasn't his concern, and the roads are bad, I can do something about that with my wealth and riches, that wasn't his concern. People's lives are not secured, and I can do something to bring security to them, that was not his concern, but I will say to my soul, soul that has much goods laid up for many years, Take thine ease, eat and drink and be merry. Eat and drink and be merry. That's a one man party. He had this intention and he had this goal each every day and be sumptuous every day. Enjoy life every day. Other people are sick, don't, don't talk about that to me. Other people are down, don't talk about that to me. Other, you know, they're dying, they're dying, don't talk about to me. You can do something. You can help other lives. That's not important to me. I myself, I want to take my ease and eat and drink and be merry. Now look at verse 20. In verse 20 it says, But God said, he didn't think about that, but God said, the God of heaven who put him on earth, but God said, the God that prospered him, but God said, the God that made is supposed to bring forth plentifully for a purpose, the purpose of being a help and the purpose of helping other people. He didn't think about that, but God said unto him, the fool. He was a rich man, but was a fool. His cross brought forth plentifully, but he was a fool. He was a successful farmer, but he was a fool. He was a successful professional, but he was a fool. He was a talented man, but he was a fool. He was a go-getter. And then anytime, anything he dreamt of, I get this, I get that, a go-getter. But he was a fool. He was a prosperous man with plenty of everything desirable in life. But he was a fool. If God, the Almighty, calls somebody a fool, that person is a real fool. Who is a fool? Somebody who is a liar. And he did not think about why God made him, why God put him here, why God gave him a good brain, why God gave him a success, why God gave him plenty, why God gave him everything that his neighbors will need. Now, a rich man cannot sleep on two beds at the same time. He cannot live in two houses at the same time. He cannot enjoy uh, two uh, meals, different meals at the same time. You're giving that extra so that your life will prosper other people. The regrets of pursuing only money and materialism. God said, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided now the lord wants to give us the explanation the application of that parable he has told look at verse 21 now it says so is he so is everyone and so are you and so is he and so is she and so is everyone that layeth up treasure for himself, layeth of treasure, not for the community, not for the country, not for the commonwealth, not for the nations, not for the upliftment of other people. So is he, so is she that layeth of treasure 
for himself. So you see, that has a bulging bank account, a lot of money. He doesn't want to spend the money. He doesn't want to touch the money. I want him to reach a million. I want him to reach 10 million. I want him to reach 100 million. I want him to reach a billion. I want to be called a billionaire. And that is the goal in life. But what he has is not you seen. His mother is sick. He cannot touch that money and take care of the mother. The father is sick, he cannot take that money and care for the father. The wife, the husband, the children, uh, they are impoverished. He cannot take anything to take care of them. And I go to be a millionaire. People are dying around me, but I don't care. I want to be a millionaire. So is he, and so is she, that lays up treasure for himself. And is not rich toward God. It's not rich toward God. How do we become rich toward God? Helping his creatures, lifting up the fallen, healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, educating uh, the orphans, and helping people who cannot help themselves. You know, sometimes uh, already you have uh, money, you have the material things, and somebody gets into trouble, and uh, you know he's poor already, and then he says, uh, he comes to you and he says, can you help me? I'll try, but what do you want? I need so much, all right, I will lend you this amount of money, but you will pay interest 25%. I don't even have the capital and my life is down there on the ground so how can I do that well that's my condition they lay up treasure for themselves but they are not rich towards God when you take care of the poor when you educate the orphans when you heal those who are sick, when you help those who are helpless, when you give hope to the hopeless, that's when you reach towards God. But this man, the regret of pursuing money and materialism, and God said, today, this night, this day, your life will be taken away from you, and then you go to the other side, who shall those things be that you are taken up? Those are the people. Let's trace their lives of regret. Number one, I'm looking at those people now who concentrate. I get this. I capture that. I will build this. I will do this. I'll do that. But you don't ever help anyone. How do you trace their lives? Number one, they have success without salvation. Success without salvation. It appears they are successful when you see what they have planted, when you see what they have gathered together, when you see their bank account, when you see how they join from house to house, from nation to nation. But they have success without salvation. Number two, satisfaction without sonship. God, who wants to be their father, they have not yielded to him. All I want, money will satisfy me, material things will satisfy me, satisfaction without sonship. Number three, substance without spirituality, tangible things, touchable things. The things they have in life, that, that's mine. You know how many cars I have? You know how many houses I have? And you know how many buildings I've raised up? You know how many degrees I have? And you know how many women are, you know, following me in life? Uh-huh. Substance without spirituality. Their soul, their spirit, their heart, their life, the one that will go to God when they die, they have not made preparation for that. There's no salvation, there's no sonship, and there's no spirituality. Number four is stature without a savior in the community. They try to have a great stature. You know, anywhere they see that, you know, there are people, they want to be the leader there. I am a natural leader, and I am an achiever, and I want to go there so that I can be taller than everybody there 
They have stature, but there's no salvation, there's no savior. The most important thing in the life of a person is to make sure that first of all, whatever I build, whatever I save, whatever I gather, whatever I amass, and whatever I acquire, I have Jesus, the lover of my soul, as my savior, lest you have stature without a savior there are people you know have discovered my skill i've discovered my talent and there is one thing important to me i'm going to develop this skill until i achieve whatever name it and claim it i'm going to have this i'm going to have that stop for a moment if you have skill but there's no shelter there's no shelter for your soul. When you die, then Satan will come. The evil angels will come and carry you to the other side. And there is no one, no angel, no God, no savior, no redeemer to defend you. What will you be? Skillfulness without a shelter. Number six, self-sufficiency without service. Did you see that man? I read his story to you. I will break down my bands, I'll build another, I will acquire this, I will acquire that. Self-sufficiency without service. He wasn't ready to serve any other person. I'm, I'm asking you, what you have? Are you able to serve another person? You say, I'm just a child, how can I serve? You know, when I was uh, younger, after I became born again, a real child of God now, in my class, year one at the university, because I, God gave me the knowledge and everything with that mathematics and, uh, you know, they teach it for the first time and the thing sticks in my brain. We had an old man in our class. So this old man, everything the lecturer had been saying for the past one hour, he got nothing out of that. And when we finish, we have a free hour after that. He said, William, come, you know old man that I am, that everything the lecturer was saying, I got nothing. And then we'll sit down for the next one hour and I will teach him again what the teacher, the lecturer had said. Even though I wasn't giving him money, I was giving service, service, free of charge. And the next uh, lesson again, the next uh, lecture again, he'll call me, William, I'm here, please uh, help old man. And then we'll sit down and then I teach him over and over. And I discovered that's what I've been doing, not just for him in year one, that's what I've been doing uh, even before for that time that whatever you have you have sufficient you have sufficient knowledge and sufficient uh, impact on other people and you're serving now with what you have uh, how are you going to serve other people that's life that's life that's why we're here for impact it is for you to get something you know, and then impact the lives of other people and know the joy of serving serving others number seven is sensuality without sensibleness sensibleness there are people that live the life of you know they eat and they drink and they have pleasure and they're all flesh with flesh and you know that's all they do but then they're not sensible oh where does this drive me if i eat all that i become obese and i become overweight where does that lead me if i get this and i have uh, you know disease uh, out of that pleasure where does that lead me they never think sensuality without sensibleness but the lord is calling us he says your life will not be a waste yeah. i said your life will not be a waste and you will look at life and you understand that the life you live now is to be in service to other people so that you'll not be like the foolish man. Look at Jeremiah chapter 17 and I'm reading from verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 11 as the partridge seated on eggs and arches them not so. You see that gathereth riches and not by right. 
gathereth riches and not by right, has certificate but through export, export, and has uh, this but through dubious means. He doesn't really have, he doesn't know the right way to get whatever he wants to get. He gets everything by cheating. He gets everything by spying. He gets everything by fraud. He gets everything by iniquity. He gets everything by crime. So is everyone that gets riches, but not by right, and shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be a fool. At his end, that's what God told that man. I shall be thinking of the end so that at the end you'll not be a fool. At the end, I will not be a fool. You think about the future now. You think about where you are going. You think about the riches you are gathering. How are you gathering the riches? How are you getting the riches? How are you acquiring the wealth so that you will not be a fool at the end? Actually, Jesus said in Mark chapter 8, reading from verse 36, Acts chapter 8, verse 36, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world, all the money in the world, all the materialism of the world, all the chieftaincy titles in the world, all the items of popularity in the world, all the power and the authority of the world, what shall it profit a man? What shall it profit you? If you gain the whole world and lose your own soul, that means your soul is greater, higher, and is more eternal than all the world put together. Verse 37 then tells us, oh, What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? We're seeing the man on the wrong path. I want to turn now to the man on the right path. I want to talk to you. I said I want to talk about you. I said, I want to talk about you. We're not going to the man on the right path. We're looking at point number two now. The responsibility of pursuing the mandate of our maker. The responsibility of pursuing the mandate of our maker. That word responsibility, I want you to break that word responsibility into two responsibility responsibility the lord is giving you a mandate is giving you a goal is giving you a direction to follow and he gives you the ability to respond and you respond in an able manner in a, in a way that is quantitative, qualitative, measurable. You respond with the divine ability the Lord has given you, the responsibility of pursuing the mandate of our maker. I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 43. We're looking at verse 7. Even everyone that is called by my name, everyone without exception, I pray you will fit in. You will fit in. I will fit in. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. You will bring glory to God. Your talent will bring glory to God. Your ability will bring glory to God. Your vision, your focus will bring glory to God. And your activities, your actions, your habit, everything you do will bring glory to God in Jesus' name. 
your inventions will bring glory to God. Your helping other people will bring glory to God. Your impact in the lives of other people who are suffering in our world will bring glory to God in Jesus' name. Your life will no more be selfish. My life will no more be selfish. Your life will no more be self-centered. My life will no more be self-centered. He created you for a purpose. Everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him. Do you accept that? Yes. Is that true? Yes. Did he create you? Yes. Did you create yourself? No. Did Satan create you? Did those uh, gang uh, members of the gang did they create you? Oh. How is it that those gangs will be so selfish and take who they have not created and then use for their purpose and then draw you away, snatch you away from the one who has created you and say, Forget about the creator, forget about your maker. Forget about the one that gave his only begotten son for you, that you will not perish but have everlasting life. And he said, forget about your benefactor. And then just live for them. That's selfish. I will not be their slave. I will not be their captain. I will not be the, their errand boy, their errand girl. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, yes, I have made him. The Lord has made you. Now, when the Lord made Adam and Eve, they did the wrong thing. They became a mess. They became mediocres. They became miscreants. And then the Lord came to them again so that he can bring them back to the original position he created them. Why? That's why he sent, he sent Jesus. So that as your life is now, maybe your life is messed up. The Lord made you. But now look at your condition. Look at your thoughts. Look at your life. Look at your direction. Look at who you are. That's why we're here. That instead of being a misfit, I will not be a misfit. I will not be a misfit. I will not be a misfit. What does he do to bring you back to the place he made before? Number one, he melts you. Melts you. You see, when you hear something you know, that makes you to think, that's right. Am I doing the right thing? Am I in the right place? Is this what I should be at this age? With a Bible in my hand? With a God in heaven? With a Christ who died for me? And with all these speakers who are talking to me? And everybody wants my development and growth. How am I like this? Number one, he melts you. Number two... He, made, he kind of uh, molds you after melting you. You see, if that rod of iron remains like it is without going through the fire of melting, you cannot mold it to the right shape, but he melts you, then he molds you. Then he makes, that means he corrects the things that were wrong, that's why he says, don't go that way, it's mending you. That's why he says, don't talk that way, it's mending you. That's why he says, don't drink that thing, it's mending you. That's why he says, don't smoke that thing, it's mending you. He melts you. He molds you. He makes you. 
He monitors you. He wants to know, I want to make him, I want to get him back to the original. Many people, they are just duplicates. And they are not good duplicates at that. You are duplicate of this and duplicate of that. And then you don't have a singular life that means much to you, much to your family, much to your community. But then the Lord now says, he monitors you. He says, come back, come back. That's not the way. It says, go to the right. This is the way. Walk ye therein. He, he monitors you. He mentors you. That's why he sends people across your way that will teach you. That's why he sends people across your way that will make you stand up straight. That's why he sends messages up to you saying, don't allow this year to go again like last year went. And so he mentors you. He tells you, he helps you to be what you ought to be. And I pray as the Lord has come to remodel your life, I pray you will not say no to the Lord in Jesus' name. And then he models you. He wants you to be a trophy. He wants you to be somebody other people can look up to. And the Lord will say, that's a model. Follow after his life, that's a hero. Follow after his life, that's a champion. Follow after his life, that's a conqueror. I follow after his life. And the Lord, through this period, and even today, will make you a model in Jesus' name. And then he makes you a master. That you master, he masters you, and then you are able to master other things in your life with great mastery that will get you back to where he wanted you to be. And he says, Even everyone that is called by my name, for I, the Almighty, I, the Creator, I, the Reformer, I, the Recreator, I have created him for my glory I have formed him yea I have made him look at verse 21 in verse 21 he said these people these people have I formed for myself these people have I formed for myself they shall show forth my praise amen. are you part of the people yes. or are you amen amen Amen. Amen. I'm so happy for you. New things are going to begin to happen in your life. New direction in your life. New power in your life. Whatever has become a mess of life, of a life in you, the Lord is going to go through the process of remaking you all over again in Jesus' name. And as he melts you, don't dodge. As he melts you, don't reject. As he melts you down so he can mold you, don't kick. And as he molds you to the image and to the picture and to the perfect pattern he wants in your life, don't say, I don't want that. It's going to make the best out of you in Jesus' name. And as he mends your life, as he monitors your life, as he mentors your life, and as he makes you the object of praise, you're going to be from tonight, you'll say yes to God. I say yes to God. With your hands raised, I say yes to God. With your hands up to heavens, I say yes to God. And so now, the Lord is going to give you a new ability. What you couldn't do before, you will do. He's going to give you new wisdom. He's going to give you new energy. Is going to give you new skill and that new energy and that new skill and that new personality that will stand firm and stand erect and then face the future and know I have a goal and is getting to the peak. 
you will fly and you'll get to the mountain top in Jesus name how, how, how will that happen in your life Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 whatsoever thy hand find that you do whatsoever am I writing an essay whatsoever your hand finds to do am I writing an article am I writing a research paper whatsoever your hand finds to do am I writing an exam whatsoever your hands find to do am I reading a book reciting the book reviewing the book and then am I rewriting the thoughts and the things I've learned whatsoever your hand finds to do am I feeling a form am I getting information am I putting the information down whatsoever your hand find that to do am I working in a practical way like a farmer like an engineer like a doctor am I walking to feed and to help other people whatsoever your hand find that you do am i carrying a baby am i nursing a baby am i using my hand to make another life better whatever your hand find that you do am i mending a broken life a life that is down a life that is dejected and then i put forth my hand and i want to mend and mold that life and build that life whatsoever Whatsoever your hand find it to do, am I carrying something? Am I carrying an object? Am I driving? Am I, whatever I am doing with my hand, you understand? If we're going to make it alive, it is not just the farmer, it's not just the person that is sweeping the ground. If we're going to make it alive, we have to use our hands. And whatever thy hand find it to do, and your hand must have the support of your heart your heart must have the support of your head your heart must have hope that what i'm going to do now will lead me to the place and to the thing that the lord has created me for and whatsoever anytime every time whatsoever your hands are dedicated to doing to lift you up to the place you ought to be whatsoever thy hand find it to do do it with all thy might. Don't say, I don't like this, I don't like this job. Like it. Don't think about what you don't like in the job. Think about the things you like in the job. Think about the opportunity the job is giving you. Think about the, the challenge and the place, the opportunity the Lord is going to give you after finishing that. I don't like studying this subject. Don't say that. I think about what that subject will do for you and do to you in the future. Think about what you like about the subject and think about other people that have handled that subject and they're now on the top. Therefore, do it with thy mind, for there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave way that thou goest. You will do well. Yeah. I will do well. The next, the next time you hold a pen and you want, you want to write something, don't be absent-minded. Bring all your heart, bring all your mind, bring all your intelligence, bring all your learning, bring everything you've got into that writing. Or you are typing something on the computer, bring every good thing you have and concentrate so that this thing that you are doing will lead you to the top. Where are those hands again? Those hands will lead you to the top. Amen. Where are those hands again? You'll be a writer. Amen. You'll be an author. Amen. You'll be a manufacturer. Amen. And everything you do with that hand will lead you to the top. Amen. Of Jesus name. I almost want to come there and see your face like this because I see a conqueror there. I said, I see a conqueror there. Amen. You will succeed. Amen. You must succeed. Amen. 
heaven affirms it, you will succeed in Jesus' name. Uh, look at John, look at John, look at John. I'm looking at John chapter 15, verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can he except he abide in me. Look at verse 5. It says in verse 5, I'm the vine and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Without Christ the Christian can do nothing. You know, if you write that word Christian, write that word Christian. Have you written that? What are the last three letters? That I A N is. If you separate that I A N from the Christ, that means I am nothing. I am nothing. You see, Christ wants to be your redeemer. You say no, you pull back. I am nothing. He wants to forgive your sin. He wants to set you free. You say, no, no, Christ, stay by yourself, and I'm going to be, my, be by myself. I am, I am nothing. You want to climb the mountain. You want to go up. And Christ says, here I am, here I am. Be a Christian. I will help you. I can climb every mountain with you. I can go through any valley with you. I can swim across any, any river with you. I can take you through any challenge in life. Say, no, no, no. Say by yourself. And then you become A-I-N. I am nothing. But you know, if there is an integral figure, we make one. And then we have zero that is nothing. And you bring them together, one, zero, by the side of each other. What is that? Ten. Ten. Look at that. Christ, he is everything. He is that number one. And the way, the life, and the truth. No man coming to the Father except by me, and you have been a zero in life. And then he says, Come, and he's standing waiting for you. And then you come, and you come, and you come, and then you join with him. You become, you become, and you and Christ will conquer any problem. You and Christ will achieve everything. But don't separate yourself. If you separate yourself without me, you can do nothing. But look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, If ye abide in me, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. And it shall be done unto you. You have it tonight in Jesus' name. I come to point number three now. Point number three, our reassurance while pursuing his mission towards men. Our reassurance. What reassurance has the Lord given you? Number one, he says, I will help you. Amen. Number two, he says, I will heal you. Amen. I didn't hear your amen on that one. Yeah. Number three, it says, I will hear you. Amen. Any cry, any call, you send an OSOS to heaven. It says, I'm always here for you. From this day, you will hear every prayer of your heart. Amen. Number four, it will hold you. You will not fall. Amen. You will not fall. Amen. Strength, ability, agility, energy will come from heaven and the Lord will hold you in Jesus' name. Five, 
I will hide you. When trouble is raging, when there's calamity, there are problems, there are pandemic, there are every bad thing there, the Lord will hide you in his pavilion. I will hedge you. Everything you have, the Lord will set a hedge around you that the enemy will not touch you. And the powers of darkness will not touch you. They will not touch your brain. Somebody said, every time I'm going for exam, my brain gets hot. That's in the past. From now on, that brain will not get hot. Every time I'm going for an interview, every time I'm going for an interview like that, that's when a problem crops up at home. Myself and my wife, myself and my parents, we cannot see eye to eye. And it comes every time I'm going for an interview. And then when I get to the interview, I'm all confused and, you know, I'm not able to answer well. That's the past. That will not happen to you anymore. I will hate you and then... I will honor you. Amen. What I said is going to help you. Look at Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. That is, if you become a child of God, you give yourself to the Lord. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Underline that. I will help thee. Help will always come from above for you in Jesus' name. Yea, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. I see somebody here tonight. This year, you will not fall again. Amen. You will not fail again. Amen. You will not falter. You will not miss your way in Jesus' name. Number one, I will help you. Number two, I will heal you. Anytime, if you're sick, normally the Lord will keep you in good health. Amen. I said the Lord will keep you in good health. Amen. But should in case anytime sickness knocks at your door, you will not go and answer the door and say, Christ, who abides in you, answer the door for me. And then when Christ answers the door for you, that sickness, that infirmity will flee away in Jesus' name. Look at Jeremiah chapter 30, and I'm reading from verse 17. It says, for I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. I will heal thee of thy wounds. If you have any wounds that has not healed for many years, it will heal you tonight. If you have any wounds inside your intestine that you call ulcer, it will heal you tonight. If you have any wound and it's breaking out, um, you know, pause, whatever, I've tried and tried, I've applied notion or whatever, tonight I will heal you of your wounds, save the Lord. Then, at number three now, I will hear you. Your prayer tonight, it will hear you. I say your prayer tonight, it will hear you. Look at Job chapter 22, verse 27. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee. And he shall hear thee. And thou shalt pay thy verse. Look at verse 28. It says, and thou shalt decree a thing. You will not beg. You will not cry. You know, when uh, the captain of an army or the military government wants to decree something, you know, uh, the captain, uh, the major general does not come over the radio, over the television, and then he's crying and crying, and he's saying, uh, I demand this, I declare this, and crying. Uh -uh. Now stand like a soldier tonight. As king's kid that knows 
Here is my father, and this is what my father was, and with the voice of assurance, you will decree a thing, it shall be established unto thee. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. And then he says, number four, he says, he will hold thee. He will hold your hand. I said he will hold your hand. I said he will hold your hand. I said chapter 41, verse 13, for I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy hand. He the Lord your God, make him your Lord, make him your God. Say he's my redeemer, he's my savior. And I surrender myself, my life totally unto him. And then I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy hand, saying unto thee, fear not, I will help thee. Number five, this that it will hide you. Psalm 27 verse 5. Uh, Psalm 27 verse 5 for in the time of trouble it will hide me in his pavilion. It will hide you in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle it shall hide me. It shall set me up upon a rock. Number six, it will hate you that Satan will not be able to touch everything he has provided for you. Job chapter 1 verse 10, has thou not made an edge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side and thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land that's me i said that's me i said that's me now it will honor you can you think, can you think of if the president of our country will single you out and honor you, what an honor. Can you think if the governor of our state will be searching for you and then says, I will honor you. Can you think if the university, the, the VC will be looking for you and they single you out, I will, I will honor you. Can you think if the... Uh, president of the most powerful nation in the world will uh, you know search for you and say I will I will honor you now can you think if the king of kings and the lord of lords if our creator our redeemer if the god of heaven singles you out and he says I will honor you I about that I said I about that will you draw back and say no I don't want honor you say, no, Lord, keep your honor. I don't want your honor. I don't think you'll do that. I think you'll run to the Lord and say, Lord, I've been waiting for that. I want that honor from heaven. That honor will bring every good thing in your life in Jesus' name. In Psalm, in Psalm 91, verse 15, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. You are not alone anymore. I will deliver him and honor him. And honor him. And honor him. There was somebody. He had an enemy. An enemy that set gallows for him. And his friends and family, they said, go to the king and tell the king you demand the life of this man your enemy come and hang him there and then the man rose up early in the morning and he went to the king and the king said who is there waiting for me and he said is so and so he said let him come in and then before he said what he wanted to say the king said now i want to honor somebody what do you think I should do to the man I want to honor? And this man said, Get the horse, your right arm, decorate it, and then your garb of royalty put upon that man and let the next man take him round the town and say, This 
is the man that the king has decided to honor. And then he said to Haman, get up and do that for Mordecai, your enemy. The king of kings and the lord of lords has made announcement all over heaven, all over the earth. I want to honor a boy. I want to honor a girl. I want to honor a young man, a young woman. I want to honor somebody there and is asking the angels, what should I do to that man, to that woman? I am going to honor. And then uh, they said, the man you want to honor, lift him up. Let him have a ride and let him go through the whole world and give him the best position in life and give him the best position in his country and give him the best position in the universe and God said that is what I will do to that man to that woman and he's talking about you the Lord will honor you where are you where are you today today has become a turning point in your life in Jesus name now, please, now, please, wait for me, wait for me, sit down first, sit down first, wait for me. I know that honor has come for you. I know that power has come for you. But, uh, you know, let me go through, let me go through my, you know, usual thing to bring a special blessing to special people here. Heads bowed and eyes closed. You want to come to this God and you want to come to this one who is thinking the best of you, who is planning the best for you. You have been far away. He wants to draw you near and you want to draw near and you want to say, Jesus, be my Savior. Jesus, be my Lord. If you will confess you with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that Jesus rose from the dead. He says, thou shalt be saved. You will be saved. Salvation is coming to you right now. Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. You want to connect with this God who will give you a purpose-driven life. You want to connect with this God who will make your life spectacular and your life different and bring the blessing and the honor of God upon your life. Where are you? Raise up your hand. If you are raising up your hand, stand up right there. It's a special day for you and it's a day remarkable cable in your life stand up where God bless you there God bless you there God bless you there God bless you there heaven is waiting for you to stand up heaven is waiting for you to indicate and to say Lord here I am I want the glory I want the help and I want all that heaven has for me raise up your hand and stand up while you are standing up tell the Lord Lord you have called me and I come you have invited me and I come and I give myself unreservedly, wholeheartedly unto you. Save me, forgive my sin, change my life, turn everything around in my life. You will do it now. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. I'll give you restoration. I'll give you redemption. I'll give you righteousness. And I'll give you the right ability to respond to all my goals in life. For you keep on standing as I pray for you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we well, thank you at this time. And Lord, I pray all who have come sincerely today, receive them in Jesus' name. And I pray salvation will come to them now. I pray forgiveness will come to them now. I pray the freedom from heaven will come upon their lives now in Jesus' name. Let the joy of salvation settle in their hearts right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It is done. We we'll call on our moderating minister tonight to come and help us during this uh, counseling period. And then I will come. There is healing. There is upholding. There is honor for everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Decision today. That decision to come to Jesus is the best decision you would ever make. The counselors are around you. Take that slip from them. Feel it so that we're going to be able to help you further in this great decision 
that you have made. If you're online, or you're listening on radio, or if you're watching on TV, it's a great day for you. Giving your life to Christ is the best decision that you will ever make. There's a, there's a link online, if you're online, there's a link scrolling there. Click that link or copy it and then provide the information required right on that link so that we can be of great benefit to you. If you're listening on radio, there is a phone number. This phone number, send an SMS or a WhatsApp message. This phone number, plus 234 915-444-9263 plus 234-915-444-9263 Fill the forms, provide your information so that we can be of great help and support for you. You are Christ, you have come into significance. Remember, I am nothing without Him. And this evening, you have taken the best decision to join yourself to Him. Feel those information so that we can further show you the path to greatness in Christ. For those online, use that link on your screen. Make sure you click on it and provide your information. Connect with Christ at this moment. Don't ignore it because it is, it is the important next step after this great decision that you have made. Can I remind those who seem to be moving? It's important that you get seated because the man of God is still coming to crown you with a final prayer that will lift you into the place of honor. Remain seated. Remember you have been told that today you are moving to a place of honor. Make sure you sit down. Make sure you begin to pray now. Begin to commit yourself into the hand of the Lord. Begin to pray your way into the place of honor. There is a point of lifting here tonight. You are going to be moved to the next level. Begin to pray. This is that final, that great opportunity that you have to rise to the point of significance, to a state of honor, to a state of being crowned in the glory of the Most High. Begin to commit yourself to God's hand because the Lord is going to lift many from the Mary clay into the king's seat even this evening. In the name of Jesus, you will not remain the same. The Lord is going to do something new in your life today. He's going to raise you up. He's going to lift you up. Don't be an exception. Don't be an exception. Take advantage of this, this point to connect with heaven, to prepare your heart to receive from God. It's going to do you good tonight. I see you are praying. And the man of God is ready. He's coming right off the podium soon. And you are climbing the ladder of honor today. Welcome, Daddy. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I rejoice with you. Your honor from heaven has come. Forget the past. Focus on this new day. You will decree a thing. It shall be done unto you. 
And that good thing you decree in your life. Don't change it after the prayer. Don't say negative after the prayer. Don't reverse it after the prayer. Every good thing that comes out of your mouth for yourself. Demanding of God. The Lord will do it for you tonight. It will help you. Wherever that money is coming from that will get you to the place you ought to be, that money will come. It will heal you. Whatever may be the wound or the sickness, it will heal you. It will heal you. They will look at you as if you are the only one praying. And they will make heaven's miracle come upon you in Jesus' name. They will hold you up. If you are lame, if you are paralyzed and you stand, don't think you are going to fall, they will hold you. They will hide you. Evil eyes will not see you anymore. It will put an edge and edge around you. And then they will honor you. Angels will see you are a man of honor. You are a woman of honor. Your time has come. What are you? Father, in Jesus' name. We glorify you for your love, for your mercy, for your compassion, for your goodness for everyone. I bring everyone here, everyone online, everyone in every nation, everyone connected now, radio, television, anywhere. Lord, I pray that you will do what you have affirmed, you will do for everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, Send help to everyone. Lord, heal every disease right now in Jesus' name. Lord, hear the people of the least, the prayer of the least to the greatest, everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, hold everyone up. Make everyone to stand. Every weakness in their lives, every infirmity in their lives, take it away in Jesus' name. Hide everyone from the evil eye. Hide everyone from the people that want to injure their lives. And all those demons and evil spirits, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, Put an edge around them. A wall of fire around them. That any evil thing that wants to come in will be burnt up in Jesus' name. Lord, now honor. Lord, honor. To surprise the enemies of the people of progress, honor. And to make everyone get to the place you have ordained for them, honor in Jesus' name. I pray that everything you have desired, everything you have declared, everything you have demanded, everything you have decreed, be given unto you right now in Jesus' name. You're healed. You're delivered. You are set free. The Lord put testimony in every mouth. In Jesus' name I pray.